I really need to make a start on Jane's episode. Don't worry about it. It's not like there's a deadline or anything. Don't listen to him. You filmed with Jane nearly a month ago. You really should get a start. Yeah, and you should make a start on not being such a killjoy, Four Eyes. We have astigmatism, mister. If I wear my hat backwards, everyone will think I'm bad. Yeah, bad at wearing hats. Yeah, you're gonna need a hat when I come and shave your head when we're sleeping. Guys, guys. I'm gonna pour bleach over everything you love. Enough. I should get a start on it. This book was really good too. It was just too much. I'm gonna have to cut that bit out, obviously. <laughs> and John will be publicly lynched <laughs> for the third time that year. <laughs> so, so, tell me about your life of crime. When I was at university, I went to uni at Wollongong, but I came home every weekend to earn a living in Sydney. And, uh... What, you can't uh, earn a living in Wollongong? You think you're better than me? What? What, you think you're better than me? You think you're better than me? Oh, 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 big man with a briefcase. What, do you think you're better than me? It, well, not so much then. Uh, <laughs> and I, um... No matter how hard I tried to balance my budget, I always had to make a choice every week between eating or paying my train fare. So mm. I basically spent three years jumping ticket gates and running around trains and running around the platforms of North Wollongong Station at 11pm at night dodging fare like ticket inspectors. And I c racked up a huge amount of fare evasion fines <laughs> over the three years and when my parents found out they were quite mad at me, I, yeah. they probably <laughs> You know, I probably should have just asked them for a bit more money for food. Um, uh, and they were, I got, I got a huge lecture from my dad on how this would spoil my prospects. Uh, I intend to deliver on my brief and to talk to you about how to give a lecture. For getting a bank loan or ever being employed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, don't worry, I'm going to be an opera singer. Yeah. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all that, you know... All that coming up with cover stories as to why I hadn't bought a ticket. It was, yeah, it was just good acting. That, that was going to be my. Really. That was going to be my next inquiry. Yeah, exactly. um, how did like, how did you find? Because I would find I that has happened to me a few times, um, uh, and I'm just like mortified <laughs> every time. Um, I don't know. Maybe I was cockier back then or something. I don't know. Yeah. It just didn't or really. Just didn't like you. Just, I mean, I was, it's not like you were doing a, it on purpose. Yeah, it was a matter of survival. It yeah. wasn't, you know, I wasn't deliberately trying to defraud the system. It was just that I got really sick of eating boiled rice. Yeah. So, you know. You should have steamed it. Did you have steam <laughs> it? <laughs> um, is this the same time that you were looking to be a scientist? Uh, that was after I was looking to be a scientist. When I finished high school, all I wanted to do was be a forensic scientist. What made... So, what, what? I liked drama so I put my um, arts degree that I did as number one and then every other preference in terms of getting into university was forensic science and I don't actually know like how I would have gone studying forensic science because I faked really easily and I suspect that I just would have gone into my first day of classes and just <laughs> so I don't know that it would have worked out but I still have this obsession with forensic science I watch Silent Witness and Crossing Jordan and all of those bones all all of them Eric i watch bones. all of them yeah and so uh yeah it's it's been a lifelong obsession with forensic science what do you reckon started it i have no idea i don't know i don't no, know like, a forensic scientist yeah. um yeah it's just how your brain works 
sick. I would. <laughs> okay, you may say that. Um, it's that um, that wanting to get to the bottom of something, or wanting to work something out that is unworkable. It's the solving Artible. of unworkable the problems. <laughs> Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Um, because you are a bit of a problem solver in real life, also. I do try. Um, because you have, um, as a cover. <laughs> gone on and solved more problems than I think anyone I know. Yeah, it was wild there for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had these sort of this run where I kept getting catapulted into opening nights of shows on in major very, roles, too. in major roles yep. and very little rehearsal. Yep. And there was there was a lot of problem solving on the fly. In fact, the whole night would just be reacting to everything. And I remember um, I've seen you do it. In fact, yeah. you like I don't know how to dance. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, just follow me. <laughs> just, just make it up. Yeah. 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 It, it, it is, you know, you're literally in a scene going, what are you going to do? Okay. What am I going to do? Okay. Good. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. What did you audition for um, at Channel 9? <laughs> so, <laughs> when I finished my... You're like, how do I was hoping we'd move past that question? <laughs> <laughs> this is my favourite story. Uh, so, when, we, when I finished my university degree, which was an acting music degree, <clears throat> I got myself an agent. I did a heap of music theatre auditions and also acting auditions. And I remember walking into my agent's first meeting and going, look... I'm never going to be the leading lady. I'm too tall. I'm not pretty enough. You know, I, I'm not going to be. Don't put me up for. That's leading what Meryl Streep said. Don't put me up for leading <laughs> parts. But I think I could be a really great character actor. I think I think that's really where my forte is. And she went, oh, okay, okay. And and then she rang up a couple of days later and she said, I've got you a screen test. And I was like, oh yeah, what for? And she was like, it's it's a drama called Murder Call, it's on Channel 9, it's got Peter Mockery and Lucy Bell in it and they're looking for the, the sort of the second, um, one of the main characters, she's a photographer, um, come and do a screen test. And so I was very excited about this. Yeah. Um, but the trouble was, uh, in my acting degree, we'd, we'd done Shakespeare monologues every week, we'd done love and movement kind of permutations of states and things, and we'd, we'd done a lot of stuff. We hadn't done any All that acting. acting woo -woo. We hadn't done any acting for camera. No. <laughs> so I walk in and there's Hal McElroy, you know, producer at Channel Nine, and there's Peter Mockery, the star of the show, and we're around a pool table, and I've learnt my script, and they say, "Okay, Jane, let's let's give this scene a go," and I do it, and then there's this sort of shocked silence at the end, and then they say, <laughs> "Jane." Do you want to come? We've taped that. Do you want to come and have a look at it? Um, and then we'll, we'll have another go. And so I go over and they start playing it. And of course... Um, having no acting training for film, it was just like... You know, the whole time. And I was just in shock. I was just looking at it going... Oh, what have I done? Oh, that's ter oh, oh, turn it <laughs> off. Oh, ah. <laughs> and then they said, "Well, now that you've seen it, Don't do you want to have another go?" <laughs> and this time it was even worse because not only was I overacting, but I was also no, trying not to cry. <laughs> I was so <laughs> I'm trying not to burst into tears at how terrible that first take had been. Oh, so yeah. we got to the end of that, and there was this sort of polite kind of. Thank you. We'll let you know. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, we'll let yeah. you know. <laughs> we'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and tell me about the obsession you have, not with my hair, um, but with... And with your hair. Musical theatre. <laughs> oh, about musical theatre. Uh, I was just nuts about it. When I was 15, I went to the local video store, when they still existed, I borrowed every musical... Um, Easy yeah. video? Easy. Easy video. And I borrowed every film musical I could get my hands on, watched them all through the summer holidays, even taped the soundtracks of them to cassette tapes. I used and to love that. Anything with Anne Miller and anything with Howard Keel and, and I just watched... It. So more at, more movies with music in them as opposed to musicals no like, they, they were musicals they were they were um like annie get your gun and stuff like that. yeah yeah no yeah. they they were usually the sort of the hollywood version of the stage show you know yeah. like sweet charity or yeah um 
and and I just loved them and all I wanted to do was be in musicals and and when I came out of uni I, I did m- musical auditions for about a year or so and I didn't get anything and eventually I walked into a musical audition I think it was for Beauty and the Beast and I was like I'm definitely gonna get this one I am Belle I read a lot you are Belle. I'm misunderstood <laughs> and um and I <laughs> And I walked into this audition and they said, you know, here's Jane and she's going to sing blah, 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 blah. And, and the musical director actually stopped me and said, honey, I just want to let you know, no matter how well you sing today, we're not going to cast you. You're just too tall. Uh, and at the time I was devastated, but then I was actually... I'm devastated. <laughs> well, then I was actually really grateful to him because I'd been doing these auditions for a year and, and nothing had happened and I'd, I'd done some terrible auditions but I'd also done some good auditions yeah. and it just kind of it was the kind of the missing puzzle piece that I was like oh okay it's not necessarily how I sing or how I act it, there is you know I, I do I used to say I had a Marina Pryor voice in a Rhonda Birchmore body like it was just <laughs> except that I can't tap uh, but <laughs> yeah. um Yet, there's <laughs> still time. Um, and so it actually kind of made sense. And, and it was around the time that my singing teacher started saying, but maybe you should look at opera because... No you matter know, what shape you, you can, are. Yeah, if you've, if you've got the goods there, they'll, they'll be a little bit more lenient on, on your height. And, yeah. so, um, and so that's when I started really taking opera seriously. Thank goodness, because I love it. Yeah. I mean, you would have been a fantastic musical theatre singer also, but... Well... Maybe, but when, yeah, it's dis, uh, it's disappointing mm. that that's what it comes down to sometimes. That it's not about the most talented person; it's about can you fit into the costume and do you look, uh, uh, do you match the picture of this, you know, um, Polaroid that we've taken in the original production, like the Phantom. And when you and I've seen Phantom many times, and it's always exactly the same, yeah. apart from you know vocally. Um, but that's what makes it interesting, the fact that vocally, vocal um, personality is something that I think is missing a lot in musical theatre today. Especially. One thing I've noticed recently and that I absolutely love is that there's been much more of a push for diversity in casts in both musicals yep. and also TV and yeah, movies. Yeah. And, um, As there should be. You know, and, and I absolutely love watching characters that you've thought of a certain way because you read the book when you were 10 or something look completely different and sound completely different and be completely different and and I absolutely love that. Like an African-American Javert. Love it. Love it. All right. What do you reckon? Good. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. Pleasure. Anytime. Hello, people of the internet. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to catch another episode of Anything But Opera, you'll find it here. If you'd like to catch another episode of Anything But Opera, you'll find it here. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified every time there's a new episode. Gilbert and Sullivan. Light. Yeah. <laughs> but it's already pretty light. When you light. can't handle Gilbert and Sullivan, try <laughs> Murano. Yeah. No. And it's 50% less racist. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!